Hello guys, welcome to another video. So, first of all, I want to apologise for the last clip. It's just I had to pass on everything which I wanted to tell you, which was of course said in the live stream, which nobody bothered to attend. But anyway, today we are doing the review of the Fire Emblem Free Houses DLC. So, um, the DLC consists of about seven levels and you, and you do encounter the the secret fourth house called the Ashen Wolves. Um, the members consist of Yori, Balthus, Harpy and Constance. They're all very unique characters and they all have their own reasons of being down in um, what is called Abyss, which is below the monastery. So today I'm really going to go over, over the story, Abyss itself and of course the characters and just be warned, warned there are spoilers ahead. So I want to start with Abyss. So uh, Abyss is, of course, as I said, below the monastery. And it's where people go who have been shunned by people above. Whether it be orphans or, you know, um, the elderly or anything like that. People who seek refuge, who can't live uh, on the surface. And it's small. It's a small place. <laughs> I was hoping it, it would be bigger, at, le at least the size of, of the main monastery, which is massive. But the place is tiny, and there's not really much to explore. There is one, like, uh, psychic room. Nobody ever appears there in the uh, entire story. I, f I think the most interesting part uh, about that, that whole abyss is that there's archways with water. <laughs> and a room where, where people leave free, free weapons. <laughs> which is kind of disappointing but it is a nice nice thing to have a new area which you can now access during the uh, main story um, as well um, I will also briefly briefly touch on that so of course with the DLC you can also now in the main story whether you go with of course blue lions black eagles or uh, the golden deer um, they well, you can go into Abyss, you can recruit the Ashen Wolves, um, plus you get new outfits, there's some new missions you can do, which I haven't done yet, but this is not for the stuff which is in in the main story. Um, and you also, I think you get more, more support conversations, n new classes, which means like different... Uh, things people can be such as a sword master or, or, or a mage and um, new items um, and you can also recruit one of the different characters called Anna but apparently that's been the case in many other Fire Emblem DLCs with the different games um, so then we'll move on to the characters so Yori is kind of the boss uh, the leader of the wolves He's the son of Lord Holst, which I would have, would have, would have never guessed because Lord Holst, um, he is mentioned in the main story, but you don't hear about him having, having an adopted son who vanished, Yori. <laughs> um, he's in an abyss because he, he worked for the church and when they told him to kill his old gang, since he was kind of a brigand, um, he refused to do that and he killed some church knights instead um, but um, it turns out he was secretly working for the church anyway still um, which of course I'll, I'll explain it in the main story um, yeah we're still going <laughs> sorry um, and then we have Balthus he's more of a big mus muscular brawler grappler kind of guy um, very in your face, very very loyal to his friends, just like um, Yori is. But Balthus, he is well. He was a minor lord, a minor lord, but um, he got into too many debts, and he has loads of bounty hunters after him who who have been assigned to kill him. So he has to hide in in, in abyss because of that. I quite like Balthus, if I'm honest. He's he's a pretty good good character. Um, Constance is very intriguing. She is a member of House Nouvelle, um, which was a different house, but they hid the fact that they were House Nouvelle. And 
uh, the house the house in question lost during the war so they lost their status and everything and um, this caused and Constance to seek out abyss and plus this is the strange thing when she's in sunlight she becomes depressed so you have like one or, or two missions outside and she's just really depressed telling people to, to take her own life so that is kind of uh, <laughs> kind of not good you know um, but I, f I think that's a, a very unique characteristic but as soon as she's in the dark she's like all very very energetic in your face I'm the queen you should love me <laughs> all of this and her aim is to basically re restore her house to the form to the former glory and um, then you have Harpy who I didn't I, I don't know much about her sadly um, I think her reason why she's in in abyss is because um when she sighs this is strange when she sighs monsters appear whether it might be a giant bird or a giant wolf or, or whatever you see it happen on, on one of the missions and I, i'm just like what <laughs> I, I did not see it, didn't see it coming like sighing attracts monsters apparently with her but uh, apart from that she She's probably my least favorite character, which is going to upset a lot of people, but um, she's still good or all the same. Um, and let's move this camera a bit because I cannot see the time because of the sun. <laughs> so let's just place you guys down there. I hope you can still see me. But anyway, so let's move on to the story. So of course, with the story, you you actually get to play as all three lords. Um, Dimitri, Claude and Edelgard um, with one student from each house which were Ash from uh, Dimitri's house, um, Hilda from Claude's and Linhart from Edelgard's and the way they found the best is kind of stupid. <laughs> Basically they, they saw some guy go in, uh, into a hole in the ground and they called him and then they, they found they the found best. Um, this is where the story comes into play, so if you don't want to know the story, stop now. Um, but um, when, when, of course, the characters enter Abyss, they are met by the Ashen Wolves, and they have to beat the Ashen Wolves to earn, uh, 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 earn their trust, which is, a, which is actually a difficult mission. Um, and then um, what happens is, basically... The story is kind of cliche and part of me is quite disappointed by it. So you basically go through different missions of fighting rogues and phantom soldiers um, who are trying to enter Abyss because they are after a chalice, uh, the, the chalice of beginnings, which um, Elfric, who is apparently the patron of the Ashen Wolf House, um, is actually evil. Kind of saw it coming. Even though he doesn't have the whole bad guy vibes. Um, and basically he tries to raise your character, Byleth's mother. Um, who of course died during childbirth in, in, the, in the main story. Um, I, I, I get his motives. But why, is, why isn't why is Gerald's dad involved? Because Byleth doesn't really speak. <laughs> Gosh, my throat. Because Byleth doesn't really speak at all. So... Lots of people think, including me, that it, it would be good to have Gerald in, in the story, but the developers want it to, of course, be all focused at, around the Ashen Wolves. So Yuri does b betray you, but it turns out to be a trick, and then uh, Elfric turns him and Citri, who is by us mum, into a massive monster who, who you have to kill, which was kind of a, a difficult battle. Um... And then basically, Rhea, the Archbishop, just lets him go. Um, uh, Elfric here is forgiven, and the Ashen Wolves can live their lives because they've been, been been pardoned. The end. That's literally it. <laughs> I think the best mission in the game was when you had only 10 moves to, to get through each gate on the stage. Um, and if you lost one character, um, you would inst inst lose the whole match. That was hard, and it was very, very tense. We need more, more matches like like that. Um, but 
overall, the, the story the story was quite disappointing. But the music, on the other hand, especially during the uh, final battle against the massive Umbral Beast, whew, that's a masterpiece. Fire Emblem music to me is a masterpiece, but the but the new new music only adds to it. That's one thing they haven't messed up. The music is stunning. But I did enjoy the story, even though it's quite cliche. Um, one thing I do wish they added is, um, of course, being able to and, and skip part one of the main story. Part one of, of the main story isn't bad. It's just when you play it multiple times, it gets repetitive. Um, and you have the same part one story in every single route you do. Well, apart from the Ashen Wolves. Um, so if they introduced an option where you could only play part two, I'd be playing this more often than I have been. But yeah, um, overall, I, f uh, I don't know. I don't think Ashen Wolves, okay, well, the Synergy Shadows DLC is worth the amount I paid for it, £22. But in the way it it's gives you a, a slight glimp glimpse into Banner's Mother, who is not really brought up upon too much in the main story, apart from, you know, learning why she died and everything. It It's good. Um, for that reason, really. And, of course, the new characters and the new things you get in the monastery. Plus, you, oh, yeah, you also get a, a sauna thing to raise, mo raise morale, but I don't know if I'm going to use it. I need to go onto the game and try out these other features. If you want me to make a, a follow-up video on these new features, I will. But overall, I'd say if you play Fire Emblem Free Houses, get the DLC if you want it. If you really want it. I had postponed this, this purchase for months because I wasn't sure on it. And part of me wishes I never did buy it. But I'm, I'm still happy that I did because I'm fine playing through it again. It's just the story is a bit... It's a bit cliche and quite uh, and quite predictable. But yeah, uh, this is the end of this video. Uh, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one, guys. Peace.